Hi there, I decided to do this video. Oh, I'm Black Bright, by the way. Um, subscribe, like and share. I just jump into it sometimes because I take it for granted you know who I am. But sometimes I forget that you might just be passing through and you might just have come across my video. So if you have, I talk about a variety of subjects. And today I decided to talk about benefits. I decided to talk about benefits because we never know when we're going to be in a position why when we may have to claim it's some it's for some of us is our worst nightmare we're made to feel guilty for applying we're made to feel as though we're not entitled we're made to feel as though we're begging whether or not we've paid into the system for years we're made to feel like crap a lot of times you know people are actually um worried and concerned about going to the job center or even making an initial claim because they know how they are made to feel. What makes it worse is that we know they don't really want to pay us the money that we're entitled to. It's not our fault that the system has crashed. It's not our fault that we're deindustrialized and there's no jobs. It's not our fault. I mean, they're talking about there's jobs here and everywhere and how, you know, there are increase of jobs. But it's not our fault that people can't live off of zero hour contracts, especially when they have children. So some of us, even though we don't want to claim benefits and we know the stigma attached to going to the job centre where you're made to feel like crap, you're made to feel worthless, you're made to feel like less of a person, at some point we may have to use the system and so it's important if you have to use the system that you know what you're entitled to you know what your allowances are and this is the reason why I'm doing this video you know there are people who are on the dole and we've heard nightmare stories who are not getting what they're entitled to and they almost have to beg and the slightest little mistake they make they're sanctioned their money's short and, you know, we all hear the horror stories about them being referred to food banks, losing their homes, you know, family breakup, depression, suicide, all sorts. And, you know, and what makes it worse is that the DWP are rewarded when they don't pay out the money that people are entitled to. We, they got over £17,000 in bonuses, while £1.6 million are being referred to food banks. So it doesn't even make you feel when you go to these places that they want to give you the money you're entitled to. Years and years and years ago, that when um, it was called the Department of Social Security, you would sign up, you would do your dole, they'd give you your, your gyro or your, your money and you'd go about your way, right? Now, you know, you, even if you're legitimate, even if you ha are made redundant, regardless of the reason they make you feel like crap, and I know because I've been there, I was made redundant, legitimate, all the paperwork, and I was made to feel as though I was begging for something that I wasn't entitled to. And I've been paying into the system since I was bloody 16. So I've been there. But anyway, let me let me just tell you what your allowances are because that's the reason I'm doing the video. Okay, I do get a bit emotional and a bit passionate about these subjects because, you know, it's really not right when you're made to feel like crap when, you, when you're entitled to something. Okay, universal credit is an income-related benefit which, which a person may receive if they have low income or are out of work. It is paid monthly, although this may be twice per month in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Universal credit replaces six benefits. These six benefits, they used to be given to each individual based on their individual needs. Now it's all put under one umbrella and well, we know what's happening with that. Um, okay, but anyway, the six benefits that the universal credit is replacing is child tax credit, housing benefit, income support, income-based job seekers allowance, otherwise known as JSA, income-related employment and support allowance, 
otherwise known as ESA, and working tax credit. There is a standard allowance which is paid to those eligible for universal credit. Oh, let me get comfortable. Ah, anyway, so this depends on one circumstances such as age, relationship status. Uh, the claimant who is single and not yet 25 can get the standard monthly allowance of £251.77. That's just £62 a week. How are they supposed to live off of that? Single applicants are 25 or older will get a greater monthly payment, which is £317.82. That translates into £79 a week. I'm just rounding it off. Couples who are both under 25 get a total of £395.20 per month. That's equivalent of £98 per week. I'm just wondering, are they supposed to pay rent and... Council tax, well, I think council tax, so I think they're exempt from council tax. But they're supposed to pay rent out of this. And electricity bills. I mean, I, I, I. An eligible couple in which one person is 25 or older can get the standard monthly allowance of £498.89 pence which is £124 per week. Some people may be eligible to get more money in addition to the standard allowance. People with children. Claimants with one or two children can get an extra amount for each child per month. Those with three or more children will get the additional payment for at least two children. The government the Gov UK website states claimants can only get an extra amount for more children if any of the following are true because before um before 6th of april 2017 um you were paid per child but after two april 2017 the 6th of april they're only paying up to two children if you've got more than two children three four five you're only getting money for the for, for the two so that's why these stipulations have come into force so You'll be entitled to the extra amount if your child was born before 6th of April 2017. You were already claiming for three or more children before the 6th of April 2017. For the first child, for the first child, if they were born before April the 6th, 2017, this will be £277 and 8p a month. If a person's first child was born on or after this date, then the extra payment will, for them will be instead be £231.67. The additional payment for a second child and any other eligible children stands at £231.67 per child. If a claimant has a disabled or severely disabled child, then an extra monthly payment of £126.11 p or 392.08 is available. The thing is, that's another thing that messed it all up. All these people that had loads and loads of kids, knowing that they were getting child allowance for each one of them. So they thought, okay, I have six six kids. That give me about a thousand pounds. That's how it used to work. So now the government is saying, you see, these things happen because people abuse the system. People just were moderate and didn't go over the top. Some people have all 13 children. And the thing is, the sad thing is, I mean, I guess they'll soon be 18 by now. But the sad thing is, is that those who had maybe six, seven, eight, nine children before 6th of April 2017, they'll still be entitled for this £231 for each and every child. So they'll be raking it in. Should a person start caring for another child, then depending on whether they were born and how many children one already has, it may be possible to claim the extra amount. Depending on when they were born, not whether they were born. Living with a disability or health condition, those who have a disability or health condition may be able to get an additional payment per month on top of the standard allowance. But remember, this is a system of assessment and it has been outsourced to third parties. Um, I 
forget how many million, I think it was 62 million the DWP has paid these two private companies to assess disability. So they're not even doing it. And I heard that it's all automated. So you don't even get a one-to-one -one where you're talking to somebody and they're able to assess you based on your need looking at you. I mean, half of these people that they're rejecting, they don't even know what they look like or what they're going through because it's all done on automation. And if people do not know how to represent themselves properly and if they're not articulate, they're going to be penalised. And that's what's happening. People are penalised because they're unable to um, articulate what's wrong with them properly. Anyway, those who have, oh yeah, so if you have a limited capability for work and work-related activity, then this extra amount is £336.20 per month. If you have limited capability for work and you started your health-related universal credit, or Employment and, su and Support Allowance ESA claim before the April the 3rd, 2017, then you could get an additional £126.11 per month. How much is that? Like 25 quid a week, please. Um, caring for a severely disabled person, a person who cares for a severely disabled person who receives a disability-related benefit for at least 35 hours per week can claim an extra £160 per month. Honestly, severely disabled and all you get is £160 per month. I don't know how people live. I really don't. This is on top of any extra amount you get if you have a disabled child government advice. Okay, so let's look at this. So, if you are disabled... <coughs> have limited capacity to work, you'll get the, um, what was it on the first page? <clears throat> okay, let's go for the one who's over 25. £395 a month, that's £98 a week. On top of that, you'll get, if the person is disabled, you'll get on top of that £160 per week. And then if they're severely disabled, on top of that, you get an extra 128 So, a month this is. Sorry, I said a week. So call it 400 call it 550 and call it 100 I'm trying to round it off. So you're looking at about 620 a month if you're severely disabled. But will it compensate, please? It won't. Um, so this is on top of any extra amount you get. Um, other financial support may be available depending on the circumstances. It may be possible to get money in order to help pay for housing costs with a payment amount depending on age and circumstances. So that's it. So yeah, um, for those who are claiming or who will need to claim, I mean, you never know what circumstances are you know you can be made redundant if you're self-employed if there's a recession people aren't um ordering anymore they're not they don't want they're not contracting out people they don't want their houses painted they don't want their gardens done you know what i mean if you want plumbing they might i mean plumbing i guess with plumbing if it gets too cold you might always need a plumber with a boiler but there's some services which are not essential and which can be put aside if there is a recession so you never know what your circumstances is and why you might have to claim benefits in the worst case scenario so i just thought i'd put it out there because it's good to have the information so at least you know what you're working with at least you know, okay, you might have been expecting a, a amount and you find out, well, I'm not going to get that. I'm going to get a B amount. So psychologically, it can help you to prepare for the worst case scenario. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.